top of the morning to you. It is Key Lime here with another weekly preview, and we've got Guild Guardians in the Guild Chest this time around. I'm going to explain how they get in there and how you get them out of there. And then I'm going to talk through Guild Wars, and then I'm going to talk through the Bounty event this weekend, and all the stuff in between. Let's dive into the weekly preview. This week is a Guild Wars week, which means you need to be spending all day today getting your defenses set up. Here are mine. Feel free to take them if you so choose. In the Sentinels, get them all leveled up. They help your guild. Do it. Be a good person. And then here's the schedule, so get on ready for these. I actually have Guild Wars videos for the first three colors of the week, which is super fortunate. So if you feel like learning how to use attack teams properly, I've got videos for the first three days so far. Hopefully I'll get the rest of the videos later on in the week. But beyond all of that, in the event keys this time around, it is the Mogram Woods. Mogram Woods, it is the kingdom of tree people. Lots of, you know, sneaky shadow tree people. I've passed the Mogram Woods in the sort thing, but that's fine. I'm going to keep talking. In here, we've got Wolfgarok, who is not that all amazing. He looks really cool, but even though he was buffed, he's still not very cool. Would not recommend opening up event keys for him. However, Forest Guardian is super nice double converter and he is also a divine beast type he also gives all beasts 50 percent mana and he gives all beasts a barrier whenever you cast him he's pretty darn cool kerberos is also kind of fun if you don't have something like a high king iron gut where you can have a reliable devourer this guy has a 40 percent chance of devour so he's not so awful and then the new troop this time around is krampus so if you're opening up event keys that is going to be where you find this lump of coal in your stocking. Krampus is in here. His spell ability is total garbage, which is doing damage to an enemy and then maybe submerging them, weird, or devouring them, okay, or transforming them into a daemon specifically, all right, or knocking them back to the uh, lineup there. This is all super weird. So I'm not a big fan of Krampus. This is kind of awkward. I'm pretty sure this is an and, so maybe it does the submerge, devour, transform, and then it knocks them back regardless. Regardless though, this troop is not useful. He does look ridiculous. His uh, traits here, nothing all that interesting either. It is literally Lump of Coal is the trait name. Dealing five damage to a random enemy with five matches or four matches of reds, or just reds in general. This is fine. Nothing all that exciting. But beyond all of that, there's really nothing else too exciting. We got Moonsinger, Moonsinger Empowered Converter. I'm not in love with Moonsinger, but he exists. So that is all what's going on in the event keys this time around. Beyond all of that, in the glory shop, we got ourselves this Wargare Brute. Wargare Brute is basically early game or early game tanking god. Like this guy in the early game would be really, really nice. He has skull protection, he has spell protection. He's gaining life in the top slot and he's cleansing everybody else. So in terms of like an early game tanky kind of troop, this is pretty decent. I wouldn't say he's the best troop on the planet, but his boost ratio is times 5 so having someone that can stay up in the top slot and survive for a long time, he's even immune to entangle, so like he is pretty ideal from a first line perspective, but overall I wouldn't really say eh. Early game players feel free, end game players feel free to ignore. But that's what's in the glory shop this time around. In the Soul Forge this time, we got ourselves some interesting stuff. We got, first and foremost, Divine Ishbala, which is not a mythic, but is super amazing. So as far as legendaries that you would maybe consider crafting, Divine Ishbala is absolutely one of those. Gives all divines 40% mana, her spell convert is turning greens into yellows, she is yellow herself, and she's also enchanting two people just for kicks. So overall, this is a very, very, very useful legendary, especially for Guild Wars Yellow Day. So maybe consider crafting Divine Ishbala. Beyond all that, Aquaticus is in here. I feel like this is the first time I've seen her in here. This is submerging all of your allies on four or more matches, which is kind of fun. But then it's basically like Infernus as far as the spell ability goes. It's doing light splash damage to three people and then exploding all the blues on the board, or half the blues, I should say. So feels very much like Infernus, just make sure you have a lot of blue on the board when you're using her. And then I'll give honorable mention to Urali here, which is basically just Scorpius's partner. So if you have literally nothing else to craft, as far as good mythics are concerned, maybe this is a utility mythic you can pick up to help you with explore mode if you so choose. But then in the Soul Forge for the weapon area, we got two big old boys in here. Hope's Crescent is basically like a crappy mang. <laughs> it's like probably the most nice way I can frame this. 
this spell ability isn't the worst thing in the planet so it's eliminating all the armor from an enemy and then it does damage and if the enemy's life is greater it does triple damage this weapon sounds really cool until you get up to like level 100 or level 150 and then this weapon's like not really killing people anymore and then it's just kind of awkward so i'm not the biggest fan of this weapon admittedly it isn't awful it's just not amazing i would rather be using something like an earth fury or a mang or a trickster shot or a shield of Raskaya. i'd rather be using those other kind of weapons which boost stats considerably versus this one which is just doing passive damage to them so not the biggest fan but it's out there but doom glaive baby this is where all the resources should be going this weapon is the best as far as doom weapons are concerned i consider it the best i think it is the one that i use the most for green guild wars day this week it is especially useful so if you have the resources to pull one of these bad boys out of a hat, I strongly recommend you do it. Also worth noting this week is that this is the start of all of the new guild guardians showing up in the guild chests. So whenever you're opening up guild chests now, you're going to see all six of these people showing up in vast quantities and making you cry a lot. Admittedly, all of these have potential value on Guild Wars Day since they all have double damage and skulls to specific color enemies and they also have 50% skull reduction. So theoretically, putting these on teams with lots of skulls would be really fun on defense for Guild Wars, but that's all up to you. I'm just a little sad that Gems of War has introduced racism into the game. Now all of this color hate that's going on, all these troops are specifically racist against a specific color. I'm really offended, but such is life. Have the devs gone too far? I don't know. But these will keep popping up in your guild chests. Once you get one of them up to Mythic, and then you get four copies of them, you will no longer see them again. So previously this used to be you had to get all of them all up to Myth Mythic in order to get them to stop showing up. Now you just need to get one of them up to Mythic, get four copies of it, you'll never see it again in your guild chests, and you can go about your happy life. So that's new for this week as well, and forever. But that's everything in the Rego section, let's jump into them spoilers. Jumping into the spoilers section, we've got ourselves a faction assault on Tuesday. I'm sure you're all having PTSD from doing all the faction assaulting this weekend with Frostfire. However, on Tuesday, you get to do it again in the Hall of Guardians. This is the team that I'm going to use to smash on through. It's really fun. But then on Wednesday, we get ourselves a little pet rescue for a little Kirby. Little Kirby is like little Kerberos. Little Kerberos. Kerberos? 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 You decide. And then on Thursday, it's a class event. Class event for the Warden class, which is your Beastie Boy. This class is... eh. It's okie doke. So, it has Hunt, Hunter's Mark on 4-5s, it has Entangle start, it has Leaf Storm start, and then it has Banishment. This all sounds fine, but admittedly, Beast troops aren't so hot. But the Warden class is there if you want to do the class event. I even made class event teams for you guys this time around. Wow! This is an Essence of Evil weapon. This is a Forest Guardian. This is a Moonsinger. You use these three and you win. And then Wolf Grok, if you can eat someone, hooray for you. But this was basically all you need to smash on through. Wolf Grok's just there for funsies. If you don't feel like running that one, this is a low level version of the thing where you're using a Mang and a bunch of mana makers to bust on through with that. Both of those teams will make you nice and happy. Then, on Friday, we get to the Bounty Event, baby! Bounty Event! Bounty Event is a really nice time to get a bunch of resources. You're going to get a crap ton of orbs. You're going to get a bunch of vault keys. You're going to get diamonds. You're going to get gems. You're getting all this great stuff. Wow. So, the new troop this time around is the Dire Cub. Dire Cub is this little cute little wolfy boy. Even his spell cast looks super darn cute. But in terms of spell abilities, it's kind of garbo. Nothing that's super reliable. It's either going to give life to the first two allies or give attack to them. Not a ton of it. Or it's going to give a random status effect to them. All of this is kind of awkward. My plan is to throw him in the last slot and leave him there and probably never touch him. This is the team that I'd be using for the earlier levels. This is a Ridgeback for mana and then two true damage dealers. And then I'm just going to chuck the pup in that bottom spot. And then if that starts to get a little rough, I'm going to switch over to this team, which is basically Excavator and Pharaohhound, and then Yao here to just destroy literally everybody and then put the pup at the bottom. 
Just remember that since Dire Cub is the bounty captain this time around, you'll get double the bonus points by using him, so ensure that Dire Cub is on every single team that you use for the bounty event. That covers literally everything for the PC, Mobile, Xbox, PlayStation side of things. Let's jump on over to the Nintendo Switchers! What's good people, on the Switch, it's Invasion Week for you guys. So for the Invasion this time around, I got you guys a couple teams, I got your back. If we jump on in to the high level team, it's going to be using the Sentinel Weapon Shield of Urskaya. This is going to give you a ton of armor to give to Guard's Avatar, who turns all that armor into lethal damage. Not literally lethal, just a crap ton of damage. So the two people in the middle are tons of mana, you can use those two to blast on through. This is for the lower level folks, this is a bunch of mana generators with the new event troop. This event troop does literally nothing useful aside from doing tons of damage to towers, so feel free to throw this guy in your lineup and create lots of mana with these other people, Sir Gwain and Lord Ember, and then hopefully you just destroy a lot of stuff with your mang. Those are the two teams I would recommend using this time around. Also in the event shop this time around is a new weapon, it's the Cane Sword. It's unfortunately restricted to knight types. What you will learn, if you have not already, is that knight troops are currently not that synergistic with each other or that good in a group. Individually they can be fine, but there is not a pure knight lineup that's usually all that exciting. So this weapon unfortunately is held back by those troops, but I recommend you get it, cause you never know. That's in the event shop if you buy up some tiers. In the event keys specifically, if you're opening up event chests, it's going to be for Swords Edge Kingdom. Swords Edge Kingdom is where all of those little nighty boys live. So if we check out Swords Edge, we see that we've got Champion of Anu, who I would not recommend chasing. Even though he feels super exciting, you never really run Mythics in the top slot. This all blue getting one stat at the start of each turn is admittedly pretty slow and pretty poor, especially the later in the game you go, this is gets worse and worse and worse. The spell ability is pretty fun, but admittedly, targeting someone and it only doing damage to everyone below them really limits its use, so unfortunately, I don't think Champion of Anu all that exciting. Queen Yezebel, however, is kind of awesome. Jack of all trades, she's able to turn someone's attack into spell damage to the first enemy, and she also just gives everyone on your team mana for some reason, which is super fun. Queen Yezebel is someone I would strongly recommend you get in your arsenal. I use her a lot in Delving in combination with High King Iron Gut or literally any Devourer. She is super great. Or even a Mang on your hero. Super great. And then finally, Graveseer is in here. Empowered Converter, turns all greens to purples, enchants someone just for kicks. Super worth getting. Graveseer is in there as well. Those are the only troops, Queen Jezebel and Graveseer, that I would recommend you take a glance at. Champion of Anu, I would not go chasing with your event keys. Beyond all of that, we get a new troop in the Glory Shop. The new troop this time around is Mr. Court Jester himself. He's a really strong red mana generator, assuming you have some skulls on the board. So he does 5 by default, but then for every skull you catch in this destroying a row and column thing, so it'll make a plus symbol. When you destroy the little plus symbol on the board, any skulls you catch will create an extra 2 red. So you need to catch at least 3 for this to be useful, but anything 3 or above is going to be really really nice for Court Jester. So not the worst person for making mana, but he is super cool looking. I mean, look at that guy. Straight up nightmare fuel right there. In the Soul Forge this time around, we've got some other stuff to check out. So Divine Ishbala is in there, and she is one of the few legendaries that I would say is potentially worth crafting. She is a really strong double converter, so she's turning reds into skulls and then greens into yellows. She is yellow herself, she enchants two people just for kicks, she gives all divines 40% mana, and she just looks super darn cool. So this troop, really really nice, really consider crafting her if you do not have her, she is used a lot. Beyond all of that, there's Wild Queen in there, which is super fun and dangerous to use. She's stealing a bunch of attack and giving it to the first troop in your lineup, and then making a crap ton of skulls and green mana to just take all that attack you just gained and use it to destroy your enemies. Really, really fun troop to use. This thing with the Wild Folk gaining two attack at the start of every turn is kind of useless, I ignore this part. This part you need to be aware of, however. The second trait is going to create a Bone Storm when an ally dies. So when someone on your team dies, you've either got a really awesome situation or a really terrible situation. So be prepared for this. If anyone on your team dies, it's going to get to crazy land real darn quick. 
And in the weapons section, there's a weapon called the Edged Blade. Edged Blade is basically the same kind of deal as the Cane Sword. This is going to be creating a mix based on Sword Edge allies, which is basically a lot of the knights that we were looking at before. Uh, unfortunately, this makes it not that useful since the knight type troops are not that good. There is no Sword's Edge team that you can make that's really all that exciting, but it is out there. I would recommend you get it if you can afford it, but I would admittedly not break the bank if this is not something that you can readily afford and afford to grab another weapon next week. Would not go out of your way to craft this, but it is out there. It's fine. Also worth noting this week is that this is the start of all of the new guild guardians showing up in the guild chests. So whenever you're opening up guild chests now, you're going to see all six of these people showing up in vast quantities and making you cry a lot. Admittedly, all of these have potential value on Guild Wars Day since they all have double damage and skulls to specific color enemies and they also have 50% skull reduction. So theoretically, putting these on teams with lots of skulls would be really fun on defense for Guild Wars, but that's all up to you. I'm just a little sad that Gems of War has introduced racism into the game. Now all of this color hate that's going on, all these troops are specifically racist against a specific color. I'm really offended, but such is life. Have the devs gone too far? I don't know. But these will keep popping up in your guild chests. Once you get one of them up to Mythic, and then you get four copies of them, you will no longer see them again. So previously this used to be you had to get all of them all up to Mythic in order to get them to stop showing up. Now you just need to get one of them up to Mythic, get four copies of it, you'll never see it again in your guild chests, and you can go about your happy life. So that's new for this week as well, and forever. Let's jump on into them spoilers. For the Tuesday Faction Assault event, you guys are going to have yourselves an all-seeing eye faction assault. This was the first one I completed, it is super fun and easy. This is the team that I like to use to smash on through, but more importantly is to make sure that when the faction assault event is going on, you go into the shop section and you get yourself a jar of eyes. This weapon is Mountain Crusher only for blue, so please make sure you grab this weapon, it is incredibly useful and versatile, super super required to go get. On Wednesday, there's going to be a pet rescue for a pet called Scrappy. Wow, super cute. On Thursday, we get to play around with that class that I mentioned is not so hot. It is the Knight class. So the Knight class is really not that amazing as a class. I wouldn't recommend trying to like use this opportunity to get a crap ton of levels into the Knight class unless you just literally have billions of gems you don't feel like holding on to anymore. But for the event itself, I did make you guys some teams because I'm always thinking of you. This is the team that I would use for the higher level folks that happen to have a little more bells and whistles. Admittedly, this just requires Queen Yezebel as far as like new and exciting stuff. So if you have a Queen Yezebel, you can use this team to smash on through. If you don't, you can use this team, which is kind of a similar thing, only it's just tons of mana generation, even summons, and then just mang to just like super hit people as you run on through. Both of those teams should be able to clear the entire event if that's your bag. But then... On Friday, it's bounty time. For the bounty event, we get to deal with a new troop called Man-at-Arms. He's just like a regular old cavalry dude. Or... What, chivalry? No? Oh, cavalry? Yeah, I think cavalry is the right word. We're gonna say cavalry, although I feel like that's on horses. Regardless, he's got a lance. Or some other weapon. Or halberd? Christ. Alright, what he does. <laughs> he's giving 11 attack and armor to an ally and then giving them barrier. This is not that strong of an ability, so I would recommend just throwing him at the bottom of your troop lineup. Since he's going to be the bounty captain, you will get twice the bounty point bonus by having him in your team. So if you are able to get him up to mythic, he won't be giving you 6x, he'll be giving you 12x. Please make sure you put this person in all of your teams as you run on through the bounty event this weekend. But that covers everything for you guys. Let's take it to the outro. And there you have it, folks. Guild Wars Week, 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 week. For PC, mobile, Xbox, PlayStation folks, we've got just a regular invasion for the Switch folks, bounty events for all, and Guild Guardians in the chests. It's going to be a really fun week, lots of new and exciting stuff. Don't forget that you get 2,000 Guild Seals by default now, or up to, so farm your faces off as you run on through. I'll be streaming all my Guild Wars fights. The schedule that I have is posted on the left there. However, I will be streaming on all of the days, just the days that aren't my regularly scheduled days, I'll be streaming like first thing in the morning. 
So if you feel like watching me go through my Guild Wars fights, that's how you do it. That's everything I got for you guys this week. I'm Keylime, you're you. I'll see you in the next one.